Hey, what up, y'all? BQ checking in with the Impact Lounge. It is Instagram month here at the Impact Lounge, so if you don't follow on Instagram yet, trying to hit that 800 subscriber mark. I've been doing some new kinds of content the last few days to uh, make the page a little bit different, so please head over, check out the Impact Lounge on Instagram. I'm gonna put the link in the pinned comment of this video. Wanted to talk Slammiversary and the build up to Slammiversary, the amazing job that Impact is doing right now. Now, not too long ago, several months ago, I got on here, I laid down in my bed and I recorded this video saying, where's the buzz for Bound for Glory? I was super critical of it. And you guys got to understand for myself as a content creator, I am oftentimes at the mercy of what Impact does, good or bad. So that's why I get a little more frustrated than maybe the average fan because I am, I have a different kind of connection to the product. So when there's stuff, when they're when they're doing stuff and there's no build or buzz behind it, like it makes it very difficult for me to create content around it because I'm not I'm not excited. So how am I gonna get you no know, the viewers excited? So you fast forward to now with Slam Reversary, you know, and, and Bound for Glory, you know, you even had the Call Your Shot Gauntlet, which was featuring no one knew. You know, we were gonna get surprise entrance and everything, and still no one cared because they presented it as, you know. Like they made this press release where they invited the uh, former manager of the Cubs and he didn't even show up. You know what I mean? How foolish they ended up looking for that. So even though they're having mystery participants and everything in that, and we got a couple good ones, no one cared. And now you look at Slammiversary and it's like some kind of light just switched. I mean, uh, light switched on. And all of a sudden the, the promotion and the marketing skills of Impact has like changed overnight. And they're creating a serious buzz around Slammiversary. And they haven't even announced more than one match. They've only announced one match. They're, and this is going to be an empty arena show too. And still, there's more anticipation for this show than anything they've done in a really, really long time. And it's based off intrigue and mystery and, and what's going to happen. And I, you know, I tweeted this uh, yesterday. You know, at the top of 2020, I made a prediction that they were not going to be players in the free agency game in 2020 that uh, El Michael Elgin was going to be their biggest free agent signing in a while, you know, and I felt that direction it was going that direction because then the free agent signings were like Rhino and things of that nature. And, you know, with the pandemic and everything, things changed the, the game totally changed. And now all of a sudden there's this crop of people and then you've got AEW who's been snatching people up, but they don't, you know, now, they don't necessarily have the this, this space on the roster. I'm sure they still have the money, but you know you can't just continue to bring people in. So now Impact has a real opportunity to be players and they're teasing that they're gonna be players in this game and they're showing aggressiveness. And if you, if you, any of you guys who watch, you know, basketball, football, there's the franchises out there who are always aggressive, like the Dallas Mavericks, okay? They're always aggressive. They're not always good. They're usually pretty decent. You know, they've had their down years, but they're always aggressive and the fan base knows that they're aggressive. Like we're going to go for the free agents. We're going to go for the big trades and fans can buy into that even when they're not winning, you know, but it's the it's the franchises who look like they're just not trying. So with this impact is communicating to us that we're we're trying at least we're at least going to go all in and. Um, you know, I've, I've been crit critical about them not going all in. Now I feel like they're going all in. You know, we're, we're, we're at least going to make the, uh, the a conservative effort to try to bring in these people. And if we got to throw some money around, cool. And the only way that would be disappointing is if like, uh, what's that dude, Hawkins, whatever, if he was like the only one to show up or uh, something, something like that. You know what I mean? But, you know, they're teasing that it's going to be a few people. We know it's not going to be everybody. But if it's a couple home runs, you know, there, there's a serious chance for for impact to really take off, especially when the fans start, you know, being able to attend the, the shows again. So let, let's look at a, a few of the things. Now, again, they've only announced one match. Keep watching to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you a couple Impact Lounge exclusives as far as Impact Wrestling news. Um, so just some tidbits. So hang out to the end of the video, but you got the Moose TNA title situation, all right? and. Props to Impact because they have not beat this over the head. This They have not beat a dead horse with this. You know, it's felt really, really fresh, entertaining. The only beating of a dead horse is Josh Matthews' commentary of it. Like, it, 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 it's not a world championship. You know, like, with the exception of that, and that, that's a small, minute detail, 
the whole like presentation of this is really really good um moose is killing it. he's knocking out the park but it's not you know they're, they're not beating us over the head with it uh because i felt like the minute the tna title showed up you know impact execs are like oh my god we, we get to do more tna stuff you know so there's the the, the moose stuff now if you watched impact last month that last night excuse me ec3's music played now I know people are teasing or are thinking in their heads, okay, EC3 is showing up, and then he put that video out that I uploaded here also on the channel. I'm not sure that EC3 is showing up, personally, um, because you can interpret interpret that video in many different ways. Um, as a matter of fact, NWA had a video that came up yesterday where um, someone was wearing an EC3 shirt. So, you know, I don't know what EC3 is going to do. But I feel that Impact is is probably going to tease Moose for a couple of weeks. And we're going to see what happens next week if Moose wrestles or, or whatever. But I feel like it was EC3's music this week and maybe next week it's somebody else's music. And I think that's going to build to an open challenge or a surprise opponent for Moose at the pay-per-view. So that, that's really where I think it's going. I don't think it's that obvious. But that's the beauty of all this is because it's not obvious what they're doing. There, there's a lot of... Um, I think they're baiting us in certain situations to surprise us in others. So there's the Michael Elgin thing. He's teasing Team Canada because he, he was on the phone. Um, and he said, you know, us Canadians are team players. So you, you got Team Canada in that. They've been kind of teasing that a little bit with Scott Demore um, on social media. And then the, the uh, Team Canada shirt that came out. Now, I didn't think it was obvious, you know. Josh really beat this one over the head. He's obviously talking to someone from Canada. I didn't think that listening to the, the phone call. I thought he he was just referring to himself, you know, us Canadians. So that's where I think that there might be baiting you in a little bit, you know, because I don't think it's going to be that obvious that there's going to be this Team Canada thing. You know, they wouldn't put it out there right in front of our faces like that. So, but that's still really, really intriguing. And... Um, the Knockouts Tag Team Championships that they've been kind of teasing without really saying it. They, they've even been saying it. They've been bringing up the Knockouts Tag Team titles on TV. You know, mo majority of their Knockouts are teaming up right now. So that's really exciting. And that's something that Lord knows I've been pushing for a long time. At the end of this episode, they said that one former world champion was going to show up. At least one. That's what they said. At least one former world champion. So, you know, you, you've got EC3, Eric Young. There's obviously Kurt Angle who could have some kind of off-screen role, and he's talked about in the past possibly doing that. And it could fit into his personal schedule because now he's got a nutrition company or something he's running. So, you know, it, it's it's possible. Um, I'm trying to think who are, who are some other uh, released world champions. I, I can't think off the top of my head at the moment, but that's really, really intriguing as well. I think we're expecting it to be Eric Young, though. Um, Madman Fulton, now he paired up with Ace Austin at the end of the show. And I wasn't sure if he was just there to attack Eddie or if he was there to help Ace. And it seems like he's there to help Ace. So, you know, there's a, the Ohio connection there. They, you could damn near do Ohio versus Canada on Impact Wrestling. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> but anyway, um, so that's intriguing. You, you now have added intrigue to the Ace Austin part of the main event and to the Michael Elgin part of the main event instead of just having a bunch of randos. And then obviously there's some intrigue to the Trey part of the main event because we don't really know who attacked them. So now there's just all these moving pieces that make this main event, which I initially thought was just a, a mess. You know, now there's these moving pieces that make it really interesting. The North is teasing that there's no one left to beat, which is, you know, there's actually a few teams on the roster they could still face. You know, they haven't really defended their title that they rest they wrestle a lot but they don't defend the titles i think they still have to defend it against tjp and falaba um they haven't defeated you know uh defended against triple xl versus reno scum you know they didn't versus the dead Z hit squad even though i don't think they're together anymore uh they didn't versus obe which they're not together anymore but um i feel like one of the reasons they split up desi hit squad and obe was to make room for some tag teams you know because I really think if they can pull this Anderson and Gallows thing off, this would really help the cool factor for Impact. But if they can pull that off, you know, the, this tag team division is going to skyrocket. Um, and again, like I said, they've only announced one match. They're building this off intrigue. So um, I'm just really excited about it. And Josh and Madison are doing a good job, especially Madison, of just complementing the, the mystery behind it on screen with, with everything they're saying. You know, Madison talking about her sources and this and this. 
Um, so I, I got to give props. You know, when I sat there and I said Bound for Glory had no buzz, you know, I meant that. It had none whatsoever. And uh, Slam Anniversary is a different ball game. We're excited. There's probably going to be a lot, lot of new people tuning into it, especially because WWE seems to really be dropping the ball on their end right now, kind of with the COVID thing, you know. Uh, but um, and NWA is not really doing anything right now. You know, AEW is really the only competition in my estimation of empty arena wrestling and how it's, you know, what they're doing. And they got Mike Tyson freaking in the program right now. So when you do that and, and your impact, you got to have, you know, you got to come with some heavy machinery as well. And they're, they're really doing that right now with the, uh, the marketing and promotion. So I got to get props. All right. So I said that I was going to get into a couple of exclusive tidbits. Um, you know, I had a conversation the other day and I can't, I really can't give details on anything I say. Uh, there's certain times that I can, and there's just certain times I can't, but I'm, but I'm going to deliver some of this information. So you kind of have an idea. Um, but, but I can't really give details and I don't even necessarily know all the details. Uh, the first one is, you know, regarding Tessa Blanchard, all I was told regarding Tessa Blanchard is that things are really, really blown over. I'm sorry. You got my cats fighting in the background there. Hey. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, that the Tessa Blanchard thing is blown over. That That's really what I've been told. I don't know if there's any truth between, behind her not submitting those videos, but I'm told it's severely blown over. It's strictly because she cannot leave Mexico. It's, it's not um, anything beyond that. Now, I think they extended the... Uh, the lockdown in Mexico, I don't know if we call it a lockdown, but I don't think anyone could travel out of the country. I think that got extended. So really what I see is a surprise competitor taking Tessa Blanchard's spot. But um, things are not as bad as with Tessa as the dirt sheets are making it sound. That's all that I'm, I'm being told. Um, the tournament, which I was really critical about because I said it was a complete mess. You know, it came across like it meant nothing to most of the competitors, you know, uh, and I said I didn't like it. I didn't like that presentation. Well, I was told that a lot of it was changed on the fly. And that's kind of the reason that it came off that way. And they had to make some really quick last minute decisions regarding that tournament. I'm under the impression that the main event for Slammiversary was not supposed to be a five way. I'll put it like that. I'm under the impression it was supposed to be a four person match. But um, the way that the tournament played out, you know, it's a it's a five person. But uh you know, I don't have like specifics on that. And then I'm, I'm even kind of just making an assumption about what the match was supposed to be. But there, the reason it was very unorganized and such a mess on television was because some things were changed on the fly. And then you don't have, you know, all the necessary resources right now to make, you know, to fix it uh, with, with, you know, obviously everything going on. There's one storyline, one major storyline that we're seeing right now that, um, it's kind of been, it's being winged. They're winging it for the most part. I think with the set of tapings we're currently watching, I think they know where they're going with it. But previously, they had no no clue what the, the final outcome was going to be. Um, so there's a lot of major storylines right now going on, you know, in the lead up to Slammiversary. Uh, but there's one that was, that was, that they're, they're winging it. And I don't even think right, I, I'm not even sure right now with the set of tapings we're watching, they know where it's going. It might actually lead up to Slammiversary to where they have some people available to them, them that they that they don't right now, whether it be the current roster or or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, saying it's a certain person, but obviously they're very limited in resources. So they do got one storyline that's, that they're, at least to my knowledge right now, no clue where it's going. So... There's, there's several that are going on that could fall into that category. And um, also one of the top stars in the roster, um, he's going to be involved in something at Slammiversary that uh, I don't know if it's going to be the storyline or the match itself or the outcome of the match or a gimmick change. But they're, one of the top stars is going to be involved in something that you're either going to love or you're going to hate. So... Um, I know there's not a lot of specifics <laughs> in, in what I just said, but you know that's I at least wanted to you know present it to you in a way that I could I could get away with without giving away details and everything. So uh, thanks for checking out the Impact Lounge, folks. Subscribe if it's your first time here, and I'm out. Peace.